Hi guys, hope all you are fine. Welcome back to my channel. Today's topic is CC 3.1 Welding Inspector, the latest question. This is the part 10. So you can get here the good questions for interview and the CC 3.1 exam. So this is the part 10. So please see the full video. Don't skip this video. The explanation is there. So it is very important for you people. So any question have the explanation means you can get the correct answer. So we prepared to proceed the video. I want to say this is my name is Ananta Goin and I have total 15 year experience mechanical engineer. I am a mechanical engineer and just do myself this video and this channel because of the I want to share my knowledge to you people. So those people still not subscribe my channel. So please subscribe my channel you see the button here the subscribe button and share and like also so let's start and this is the link you can see here this is the link this link you can click then you can uh, definitely you can get so many videos are here regarding the holding and ending so let's start The first question is during post 12 heat treatment, what is the sequence for the PWST chart? So, in post 12 heat treatment, what is the sequence for the PWST chart? Means how you will do the PWST? What is the sequence? There is four option is here. First option is restricted heating rate, second is soaking time, unrestricted cooling rate. Definitely it is no. Restricted heating rate, no. We have to go like this way. It is for unrestricted. Then we will go here for to here. Restricted. Then this is the soaking time. Then this is the restricted. And here is the unrestricted. So first will be unrestricted. You see here. So unrestricted heating, okay. It is matching the sequence restricted heating okay this is the restricted heating okay then shock time this is the shock time then the restricted cooling rate so cooling rate is here the cooling rate and this is the unrestricted cooling rate so this will be the correct option no need to go other one this is the correct one so the option b is the correct one still this one i saw here the one picture this is you see the heating rate this is the soaking and this is the cooling rate heating soaking and cooling so we will go to the next page see here this is your unrestricted heating from here to here then it is go the heating rate is 225 degree centigrade from here to here then it is the soaking this is the holding time, the soaking time, one hour minimum holding time. This is from here to here, this is a cooling time, this is called restricted cooling, 275 degree centigrade and after that it is come to air cooling. So you understand from here to here the sequence, right? So the option means option B is the correct tension. Question number two, after PWHT, it has been noticed that a repair must be carried out. How should this should this to be done? means after PWST you found a repair is there so what you do what is your action first is option is with the minimum amount of heat input no minimum amount of heat input what is your action if it is repaired not only the minimum amount heat input it will put well did check and PWST again so definitely it should be again repair welding. Again, welding need to be do. Then check and PWST do again. So this will be the correct one. Still, I need to check the option C. Defect removed by a non-thermal process. Then check no. Welded and allowed cool in the air. No. So this will be the correct answer with the option B. The PWST depend on the thickness of the repair. If the thickness of the repair welding is equal or higher of the minimum base metal thickness which require PWST then you shall perform PWST again after computation of the repair. So option B means answer B is the correct answer. 
क्वेश्चन नंबर थ्री प्रीहीटिंग मे नॉट बी नेसेसरी ड्यूरिंग वेल्डिंग इन विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग मेटेरियल सो यू सी प्रीहीटिंग इज नॉट रिक्वायर्ड फ्रॉम ऑफ द मेटेरियल ड्यूरिंग वेल्डिंग विच मेटेरियल इज नॉट रिक्वायर्ड प्रीहीटिंग वेल्डिंग ऑफ कास्ट आयरन वेल्डिंग ऑफ लो एल स्टील वेल्डिंग ऑफ मार्टन साइज स्टेनलेस स्टील वेल्डिंग ऑफ ऑस्टर्ड स्टेनलेस स्टील डेफिनेटली इफ यू गो Cast iron required low alloy steel may be required. Martensite stainless steel, steel, steel may be required. But if you go austenite stainless steel, apparently it is not required. It is totally different types of material. You can see here, preheat and a high interface temperature can have a negative effect on the mechanical property or corrosion resistance on some alloy. If you do preheat in this type of material, austenite manganese steel, austenite stainless steel. Duplex stainless steel and titanium alloys. Then what will happen? Here preheating is used to balance the thermal cycle, so reduce the sinking stress in the oil and in the adjacent parent material. When welding robot material in highly resistant joint, preheat is normally applied locally in the oil area. So if you welding casting means the preheat applied may be local in the area of the weld on it, weld only. Total or indirect, or the casting away from the weld area to balance the effort of the expansion of the contraction. So definitely, welding of austenite stainless steel, we don't need the preheating. Answer D. Question number four. The main problem with solution treatment of stainless steel is that what is the main problem of solution treatment of stainless steel? Controlling the rate of the temperature use. Controlling the cooling rate, the length of the soak period, high risk of distortion. So you know very well in stainless steel, the main there is a solution treatment. There is a big problem with high risk of distortion. So option D means high coefficient of expansion is there, so more distortion during welding. So more distortion can be there in. Welding during welding because of solution treatment high coefficient of expansion. So option D means answer D is the correct answer. Question five: When would you measure the interface temperature? When you measure the interface temperature during welding at the inspector, the highest temperature recorded in the weld joint immediately prior to depositing the next round means. This is your first run, and after that you will do the second run here. Then before you start the second run, you have to check the temperature that is called the interface temperature. Definitely, this will be the correct answer. The highest temperature recorded in the wheel joint immediately prior to depositing the next run. So prior to depositing the next run, we need to check the interface temperature. Immediately prior to commence in the first pass, no, it is not required the first pass interface temperature because the because the this is the two adjacent passes between that may temperature if needed. When the welding is complete, no, only required if the heat input is lower than the specified WPS. No, so correct answer will be the option A is the correct answer. There you see here. Example is given interface temperature details immediately before the second pass. Each subsequent pass of the multi-pass pass simply stated preheat refers to the steel temperature before welding begins. So you understand the interface temperature here. So answer A means option A is the correct answer. Question number six: If preheating is decreases, if preheating is decreased, which of the following would be most greatly affected? Means That is need. That is required preheating. But what you what you did, your preheating temperature is decreased. So impact value will be affected. Your hardness affected. Cancel strength affected. Toughness affected. So preheating is decreased means slow down of the cooling rate will not be proper. Means cooling rate will be very high. What will happen? the martin side will be generated then definitely what will happen the hardness 
hardness is the correct one hardness is the correct one so option b you see pretreatment are used to increase the oldability by reducing the sudden reduction of temperature and control expansion and contraction forces during welding preheat what he controls the formula formation of undesirable microstructure that are produced from rapid cooling of certain types of steel that is called the martensite if martensite is generated then definitely very hard and brittle structure will be get you can get so hardness the correct answer will be the answer b option b question number 7 why is it sometimes necessary to preheat the base material before welding sometimes you can see you need to preheat the base material before welding why Be because of remove oil and grease no we can we are not removing oil and grease for required for using the preheat no remove moisture from the inside of the material no prevent the possible risk of cracking this is the correct one because preheat is always required to slow down the cooling rate and this and the if the hair area it can be cracked at the time of welding in the preheat area if we preheat if it is sufficient then hair area will not be cracking so the prevent the possible risk of cracking not required if using cellulosic so not required if using cellulosic we are not required the preheat electrode as there will provide enough heat no so correct answer will be option you see here preheat is detail is mentioned preheat involves heating the base metal to a specific desired temperature for all the preheat temperature prior to welding there are five primary reason of utilize preheat it slows the cooling rate in the weld metal and base metal second is the slower cooling rate provides an opportunity for hydrogen that may be present diffused out harm harmlessly third is it reduces the sink stress in the weld of the adjacent of the base metal fourth it raises some steel above the temperature which brittle fracture might occur in fabrication so this is the fourth and five is it can help to ensure specific mechanical properties so the in preheat is very important in preheat five important part is here what is the important requirement of preheat so option c is the correct answer question number 8 ultraviolet and infrared radiation produced produced during arc welding may definitely in arc welding we can see the ultraviolet and infrared radiation is sometimes produced so what will happen make arc shift make arc striking easier be used for weld testing increase the welding speed or skin burn definitely ultraviolet and infrared radiation always cause the skin burn so this will be not the, the correct answer also option d eye injuries and skin burn it electric arc produces ultraviolet infrared light gives an arc eye that is called arc eye and skin burn you can see the answer d means option d is the correct answer who is responsible for site safety question number 9 this is very important question also the very easy question site engineer welding supervisor and approved inspector everyone definitely site safety we are doing work at site so it is each person responsibility means everyone responsibility to take his own safety this is not so option d is the correct answer question number 10 is it permissible to allow welding to be carried out in bad weather yes it is allowed if there is any protection so what is the option is there we can see here never no we can we can do welding it's a protection so never will not be correct answer yes as long as there is adequate protection protection from the poor weather condition so correct answer is this one if there is a adequate protection is there we can start the welding or we can allow the welding yes as long as basic low hydrogen welding electrode are used no it is not only for low hydrogen electrode it is because the 
bad weather means it comes moisturizer it can it comes the uh, any particles so it can be affected your welding yes as long as the welder is prepared to work in the rain so it is the uh, it is not the correct answer also it is not of the correct answer the correct answer is the option b is the correct answer so i think you understand all these 10 questions with their explanation so if you have if you have any questions just let me know in my comment box in youtube thanks a lot please like share and subscribe my channel to get the regular video take care and see you